Yeah. Uh, now, after clinical manifestations, one, we know that uh, it's going towards the dry eye, as highlighted by Jayesh. Uh, the most important thing is that we have to come to an objective conclusion that uh, a person is having a dry eye. So to have an objective conclusion, we require certain tests to be performed. Now, what should be the sequence of tests? Suppose a patient is coming to us and uh, it's very, uh, at times we have seen that what test should be performed first in a clinical setting and what test we have in our clinical setting. So if you look at, uh, most of us have uh, shermers or any stain, like uh, you can put certain dye like rose bengal or the third one which you can uh, check is tear meniscus height these are the tests which we have, or at, the, at times we can look for the tear film breakup time. And we have to draw the conclusion out of them. But we know the sensitivity and specificity of these tests. It's quite variable. And uh, again, we cannot come, uh, means like we cannot say 100% that he or she is having dry eye. That, that is one point. Second point is how to do these tests, like which should come first and which should come second. So it's always preferred to do the shermers first and then go for tear film breakup time and then the, uh, to, uh, uh, to see how, what's the extent of damage we can do the dye test subsequently. So now shermers test, again there's a lot of confusion what should be the shermers one, shermers two, but you know without going into that, I think we should keep shermers one A as without anesthesia. And but the problem is of course the stinging which patients often complain, and phototoxicity. So it's always advisable to wash the eye after putting this test. Now, these are the three tests which we usually do in our setting because it has been found that if we look, if we combine the sensitivity and specificity of these tests, then it approaches at times 200. So you can objectively state that so-and-so is having a dry eye, and you can even quantify that whether it's a mild, moderate, or severe dry eye. But there are certain other tests which we should be uh, acquainted with, like one is phenol re uh, red thread. Uh, we have to place, this is a phenol red thread which we place at the junction of the outer one third and inner two third. And there is a change of pH. That's what, you know, give us the quantification of this condition. Then of course the tear uh, protein analysis, like enzyme analysis, this is a very specific test, very high sensitivity and high specific but less available with most of us. Same with lactoferrin, lactocard is there, which can, you know, assess it by ELISA technique. Now there is one test which is more academic oriented, it's a ferning test. What we do, we take one microliter of tear from the lower meniscus, from the lower meniscus, and we put it onto the slide, and we look for various ferning pattern. And these ferning pattern, if the pattern falls into type 3 and type 4, it goes in favor of dry eye. Now, there are certain emerging technologies which I would like to comment here, though I know my colleague is going to tell and deal with all of them in detail. One of them is uh, tear film osmolarity. It's very much available now. The advantage of it is that it is very specific and it has a high sensitivity. And the cutoff that we take is 316 millimole per liter. Then the lipid layer interferometry. It's basically to assess the lipid layer, which is very important uh, for maintaining a proper ocular surface. Tear stability analysis system. It's basically a non-invasive modality to assess the tear film breakup time. So we have to take sequential photographs and we know when the myers are getting disrupted. Then meniscometry to assess the meniscus height. Mebometry, basically to analyze the mebovian glands about their how, uh, basically it's an indirect measure uh, of the steady state level of mebovian lipid. Memography will tell us about the structure of the mebovian glands. Impression cytology is uh, again a very uh, important tool Basically, uh, this is uh, important in patients, especially with ocular surface disorders. So what are the recommendations of dues? One, of course, system questionnaire, which uh, 
Jayesh has already highlighted. For Zogren syndrome, we should have one ocular symptom and one ocular signs, which I have already highlighted. Then for tear osmolarity, hyperosmolarity is attractive as a signature feature characterizing dry eye. It's a very specific test. And uh, if it is available, I think it's a very good tool to assess and uh, quantify objectively about the dry eye. Then I have told you about non-invasive tear film breakup time uh, test which we have. But one thing I must tell you in the end, that it's always better to combine the test which we have, like the earlier three tests which I highlighted. And it really gives us a high specificity and high positive predictive value. Thank you.